change the uh, the gas valve assembly the original one is in here uh, let's see. about right there I got to take the whole gun apart to get it out and uh, install this new one I got from Archer air guns here for the QB 78 series this fits the 160, which is a 22, and the 167, which is the 177 caliber variant of the same rifle. I want to show you something, too. This is interesting. Now, on this next frame, once you actually see the video, I'll show you, show you a, a frame of the original in one of these little bags as I got it back from a forum member in Florida that was a machinist took a look at it and made sure everything was straight and all clean and all of that. And you'll see how the front end of the valve looks on the original versus this one here for the QB78 series, as I said, which fits the 160 and 167. But look at the front. Not only is the, the seal moved from here back to the front of the exhaust valve portion, and there's the exhaust port to the breech, and this is the threaded bolt hole that faces down like that, where that little short fat bolt goes through the bottom of the gas tube into the valve like that in front of the breech and the tip of the bolt and all of that. Anyway, you can see that slotted right there. That uh, supposedly gives more gas volume per shot. So you're looking at a, higher, a little higher velocity with that slot ground in there. Maybe with all this back here because the seal is in the back instead of in the front like the original. Plus the exhaust valve is brass rather than uh, aluminum like the original as you saw in a little picture I put up. So you can tell the difference between these two. This one's supposed to be better. We'll see. I want to get, I got to get this thing back together today and hope it holds CO2 so I can use my, my new Dulux chronograph down there with the, with the IR LED lights. Infrared lights. It has a, <laughs> you can't actually see these infrared lights and little loop things are on until you look at the you get a, re, a regular red colored LED in the end of each light where the little wire plugs in to let you know that the, the infrared lights are on. So if these other regular red lights go out, then you know that something, something's wrong because they're wired in the series and all that, like the old Christmas tree lights. But anyway, that's the new valve that goes in about there. And we're gonna hope we can get this back together today and be able to shoot it and see what kind of velocity numbers we get out of it. I know the stock uh, Crossman valve is 500, 550 feet per second. So with the H&N uh, Barracuda greens, which are 12.65 grain, we'll, we'll run a few of those through here and see what we get. Right now, I'm gonna spend a couple hours Stripping this thing and then get it all back together again. 
Okay. Well, that took a while. It's almost 1.30. Get it back together. Made a mistake and stuck the old screw in the gas port and had the new screw in the coming up through the bottom. And boy, was that a pain to get that thing out of there. It's got some scratches on this side of the gas tube. With the Smooth out and blew out, blew up again later. But anyway, back back out here by the lettering, I gotta blew it again. Had it apart three or four times, so it's a little scratched here and there. But I finally got the new, the new gas valve in. I was, and I had to put some rim oil. I wiped some rim oil with a, one of these pieces of blue paper towel on that stick. And grab my dollar store mallet. You have to actually pound that doggone valve in. The aluminum part and the brass part, the machining is absolutely dead on the nuts. It, that's beautiful. It fits just fits like a glove, smooth as silk. Perfect. No slop, no nothing. Just fits beautifully in, inside this tube here. Well, so much for that, because. The seal he uses is a pure white rubber. It's almost like a, a refrigerant line uh, uh, seal to me. It looks like the sort of white rubber they use in refrigerators and appliances and stuff where temperatures are concerned one way or another. So anyway, I, I wiped that down with some rim oil, which has Teflon lubricant in it, and took this mallet, stuck it in the end of the, the gas tube there, literally had to pound that doggone thing all the way home where the gas port and the screw holes are lined up under under here and I finally get it took me a four or five tries to get all this lined up with this here because these two caps have a long screw that comes up from the bottom up into here to lock them all in there and stops for these pistons and, and bolt shafts and all that stuff. So finally got all of that. I also put a washer on the back of the hammer spring on the cocking piston which has the shaft the hammer, hammer piston spring rides on they both kind of go together with pins that, that come up in here. bolt works a little easier. It's a little easier to push it in and get it locked into the to the receiver or I mean the breech here. Snaps got a nice snap to it when you pull, go to pull the bolt back. And now ladies and gentlemen the big question yeah will it hold gas? Well, we are going to see right now. Box of 25, that, that uh, range bag down there is full of these things. I'll have to put some more in the other side where I got my tubes of lubricant and Q-tips and, you know, things like that. I got, this is what you get when you buy the repair kits or the like the Archer assembly kit with all the all the screws and threaded rods and funny looking little washers and all that stuff. Okay, so we'll set that down for a minute. So I, can, I can get get this. Hopefully, it won't be as hard to screw get this get, get the threads started on this gas tube cap again. That was an incredible pain last time. Oh, that thing's hard to turn it when you get towards the end. Okay, got the cap off. Now first, got to put a drop of oil on the, the business end of these things. I think it'll be easy with this. My son's bringing me back a, a regular tube 
squeeze tube with a pellet gun oil. This is just a <laughs> trial size. I don't know if you can see that, but it's about a drop's worth. Put that in there. Don't want to get, get crazy pushing on them things. Get them in there first. Since it's a new assembly and all, I thought it might be wise to put a drop on the oil on the end, plug in oil on the end of each one of these, like they say. Oh, darn it! That thing rolled off on the floor. I'm dropping everything on the floor all day long trying to do this. Pick that up later. Screw it. Have to move the chair and table and everything to get all the way over there. To Funny how steel bounces like a super ball right when you don't want it to. I've been trying to pick up screws off the floor and my seals and everything. I haven't had have my wife come in here and help me get my Bell's palsy on that side of my face. It's got my eye messed up. Oh. Seal had to move again. Uh, seal uh, spacer. Right in here is a spacer that doesn't sit tight at all. Now how about that? That new uh, gas valve uh, sits in the right spot better, easier to get it get it uh, located because this end cap is wanting to go right on. question you see you got to back off of back off of it to turn it on right? it's still leaking because you can hear that, here watch this, when I, when I push the bolt back in, push the safety in, automatic safety, now listen. It was going out there until I pulled the bolt back the first and second time. I cycled it, you know. Okay, let's try it again. Now y'all listen, let's, let's see if we can hear any leaking. Automatic safety right there. You gotta push that forward. Has does it kick about like a twenty-two long? The bolt's still kind of tight, but it still it feels good with that washer on the back of the hammer spring. The shaft for the hammer spring is on the cocking spring. That the spring keeps them put together like and you put the washer on the on that that rod that's machined into the front of the cocking piston which fits into the hammer piston up here so if the washer goes on the one back here that compresses that 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 hammer spring of mine check it out almost no kick just, you can kind of feel it like a 22 long, maybe. But, oh, happy day. She sealed up. That new, they were right, it needed a new valve. But that old valve was just like, pshhh, out like here, maybe? I thought it was coming out the end of the barrel, but it was probably right in here where that other, there's another, wait, let me, here, there's the, the breach, the seal for the, the exhaust port from the valve through here to the, to the hole under here that goes into the breach for the barrel and all that. 
so that's it she is now working so I'll have to shut the camera up again and do some uploading so we can you can watch I could put the maybe maybe I could fit the camera over here and you can watch when I shoot it to uh, get some crony numbers how about that let's let's see if we can we can do that one finally finally though got this we're gonna take it apart three or four times uh, to uh, finally get the whole gas be interesting to see what it sounds like when I when I get those uh, Barracuda green pellets in there you know it's got some back pressure to it howdy we're gonna I got the gun all set up and we're gonna take three groups of six shots each first up is H&M Sport Barracuda green uh, it's like a dome pointy shape um, 12.65 grain that's the lightest of the three so let's see how that does turn you around here Once again, Barracuda Greens. And it's all set. Woo! 650. That's a little better, better than I'd hoped for. Yowza. I was wondering about that cross slot. I, sh I, oh, that won't go in. Oh, I did it again. About that cross slot cut in the front of the Archer air valve, sort of acting like the dish in a piston dome. Only in this case, having the opposite effect and giving more compression by way of giving more gas to compress. 641 wasn't expecting that much variance but whatever oh let go oh I can't my fingers are too big I need to get a pair of tweezers or work I need to work on that uh, Bolt action style pellet loader. Okay, shot number three. 629. Down and down and down we go. Of course, I was blowing some. Oh, well, you. Blowing some oil. the first shot so oh come on that's really a hard spot to get your fingertips into oh I can't I'm dropping them all over but I just can't get my fingers in there Try to load that pellet four times. I absolutely cannot get my fingers in there. Can't see it to get my. There. 
Okay, shot number four. Six eight. You're just getting lower and lower and lower. I had one do that to me before. I'd uh, the hot sign. I think striker did that to me, and I had to go back and shoot it again, and then they kind of straightened out a little bit. It's just get it's just losing velocity like crazy. I don't know why. See, five ninety nine. This is gonna go right down to nothing. First one sitting on six fifty. I was thinking, oh, good. We're gonna that was gonna work better than I thought. If you get the number, if if you if one shot's the same as another, it'll give say duo or something like that. D O U. It'll let you know that you've got you doubled up on one. That's both numbers are the same. Five seventy five. Yeah. Went right down. I don't know. I'm going to do another round just to kind of break it in and get another round of these uh, Barracuda Greens. That's the lightest one I've got that's also really a really good German pellet. And with the way the end of the bolt is constructed on this thing, it goes into the exact same like spot every time. 560. Wow, that's weird. It's just going right down to nothing. Oh, I can't. Come on. Woo. You know, they're right. That stuff gets cold and it, it, you start losing pressure. Wow, that actually leaked a little bit. Okay. That's chilling the seals down too much. So you have to do a you could like do maybe if you do one shot then you gotta wait for that thing to cool down or warm up again rather all right nope. okay it's losing pressure First shot was 650, next one was all the way down to 641. That's how fast that thing cools off. And I think it's going to wind up being true. The more uh, CO2 pressure you get it to use, the more, uh, the faster that thing's going to cool that gas tube down and, and lose velocity. So I'm going to stop there. It shoots, it's working. That first shot was 650 feet per second. That's better than a 500 to 550. That uh, this Crossman 160 was supposedly rated at 60, 61 years ago when I was born. Mm -hmm. As old as me. But, hooray for that. It works. And it works very well, thank you. So that, that Archer valve... Replace your original with that one. That does give it about another 100 feet per second velocity. 
Unfortunately, it better be a warm day. So, the Lord willing, the creeks don't rise. We'll see you again.